Hello and welcome to the episode 29 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we will cover a change in style, a Paris recording, and a decision about the climax of the Get Back project. In 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Bass and drums, performed at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. The club, as you will remember, was managed by Pete's mother, Mona. In the morning of the 29th of January 1962, the Beatles walked into Benos Dorn's shop in Birkenhead, a tailor's boutique. Manager Brian Epstein had talked the lads into changing their attire, dropping the rough leather jacket and jeans look in favor of more respectable and genteel tailored suits. And so, it came to pass that John, Paul, George and Pete got themselves measured and paid the deposit of £12, about £257 in 2020 money, on the tailoring job. Later in the evening, the band performed the first of three concerts at the Kingsway Club in Southport. Since the venue was licensed to sell alcohol, Beat groups like the Beatles had to perform on a stage upstairs, in a room without bar, so that under 18s could attend. In 1964, the Beatles finally showed up at the Pate Marconi Studios in Boulogne sur Seine, France, for their first EMI recording session outside England. As you might recall from episode 27 of this podcast, the original session, booked on the 27th of January to record a German version of I Want to Hold Your Hand and She Loves You, had been deserted by the band. The lads didn't believe the claims of Elektrona Jessel Schaft, EMI's subsidiary in Germany. The label assumed that their records wouldn't have sold enough in that market if not sung in German. Whatever their feelings, they proceeded with the recording, joined by producer George Martin and engineer Norman Smith. It took them 11 takes to sing the German words to Come, Gib mir dein Hand on the rhythm track brought over by Martin and Smith. The matter was less simple for Sien lieb dich, since the original two-track recording separating the backing track from the vocals had been destroyed, as it was customary at the time, and the band had to re-record the song in its entirety. It took them 14 takes. With some studio time still remaining, the four tried their hand at a new composition, Paul McCartney's Can't Buy Me Love, almost completing the song in four takes. At night, as usual, the band performed their two slots at the Olympia Theatre in Paris, France. On the 29th of January 1965, Richard Avedon photographed Ringo Starr in his studio. Avedon, an American photographer, was in London for an assignment for the magazine Harper's Bazaar. He had met the Beatles at the Adlib Club and arranged the shooting with Ringo. The result was a picture of the drummer with a laurel wreath, looking like a Roman emperor. The photograph was first published by the Daily Mail on the 12th of May 1965, with the headline Hail Ringo. It won't be the last time that Avedon's and the Beatles' paths would cross. In 1969, there finally seemed to be some consensus on the possibility of performing live on the roof of the Apple Building for the finale of the Get Back film. George Harrison later remembered. We went on the roof in order to resolve the live concert idea, because it was much simpler than going anywhere else. Also, nobody had ever done that, so it would be interesting to see what happened when we started playing up there. So, on this day, the Beatles and Billy Preston rehearsed the five songs to be performed on the rooftop. Get Back, don't let me down, I've got a feeling, one after 909, and dig a pony. Other songs were attempted to, especially a few by George Harrison, 
with an eye to find one that was good enough to be included in the film. Unfortunately, something, all things must pass, let it down and old brown shoe were all far from polished and ready. One of the other songs tried out was a cover of Mailman Bring Me No More Blues, which was later edited down and included on Anthology 3. Besame Mucho, seen in the Let It Be film, was also performed and shot today. Let's conclude the episode with the 29th of January 1970 screening of The Magic Christian, the second feature film starring Ringo Starr. The flicks received its US premiere today at the Four Star Theater in Los Angeles, California, with Ringo in attendance with his wife Maureen. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. Please, if you liked it, consider visiting www.simonmas.com support to find ways to help me with this and other music-related efforts. Or simply tell your friends about the podcast. Note that the episode description includes a link to the bibliography of the show and another to the complete list of songs tried out for the Get Back project. We will have more stories about the Beatles tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.